Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Board Games. Yes. So this is kind of a format where we talk about board games and just other things related to them. This is, I believe, our third episode of yes, it? Yes, third. Yeah, and so today we are going to be talking about, we, we are going to be reviewing a few games, just mm -hmm. short reviews of, I believe, four games we have four, on yeah. the docket today. We're also going to be talking about how we organize our games as well as uh, little accessories here and there that we get asked a lot about. We also did not put out a vlog this month, even though we put one out last month. So this is kind of be a combined uh, update of sorts so that we can talk about things that are coming on our channel as well. Yep. But before we get started, this episode of Let's Talk Board Games is sponsored by a coffee company called Many Worlds Tavern. And so we're just going to take a minute to tell you a little bit about them. Mm -hmm. Many Worlds Tavern is an online coffee company that specializes in kind of like board game adjacent uh, coffee. Yeah, they have kind of different themes kind of to suit your game night. And so there's four different flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that we are currently drinking right now is the Homely House, which yes. is their medium roast house blend. I think this is Monique's favorite. This is my favorite, yes, because uh, I prefer my coffee medium. I guess. <laughs> Last time we featured What the a way roast, to describe it, yes. Which is Naveen's favorite. That is my favorite. And to tell you the truth, I've really only been drinking coffee for the past year, so I don't really know too much about it, but I know that I like this medium roast of Homely House. Yes, they also offer a whole bean coffee, a drip if you like it pre-ground, as well as a French press and a couple different options that are there. Yeah, and for those of you who are not too keen on the caffeinated side of the coffee, they also offer a decaf flavor. Mm -hmm. When you order from them, the coffee comes beautifully packaged straight to your door, and $1 from each bag purchased is donated to a gaming related nonprofit. And so if you'd like to learn more about their company and what they're all about, we've included a link to their website down below. We've also included a link for a 10% off a discount for the first 100 people who use it. So thank you so much to the lovely folks over at Many Worlds Tavern. All right, next up we have our content creator recommendation. This is something that we started last episode mm -hmm. that we'd like to continue doing. Try to keep you going, yeah. Yeah, and so this recommendation actually came from somebody on Instagram. Somebody recommended Kyle Frost of, I believe the channel's called Give Pause. Give Pause. Hobby. But yes. I'll include a link to um, his channel down below in the description. Uh, please go ahead and check him out. He does a variety of different things on his channel. Everything is is kind of what he's passionate about. You know, he plays music. He's a wonderful trumpet player. He does a lot of Root coverage. So for anybody out there who's a big fan of Root. But he also does a variety of other things, including how to play videos as well as playthroughs. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's some music on there that you can kind of play in the background when you're playing Root. So anyway, that is Kyle Frost. Please check him out. As for a little bit of board gaming news, Essence Spiel is currently going on right now. Oh, I'm so jealous. I know. Normally we would be, uh, we would ideally like to be there. Uh, unfortunately, last year, obviously with COVID, it didn't and happen. This year, and also this year, also with COVID. Yeah, it's but... going on, but it's, uh, I guess I got a little bit of a smaller capacity. Uh, yeah. So it is going on right now. Um, I'm not too familiar as to what exactly is going on at Spiel, if they're doing an online version of it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they're doing an online version, but I know that the hall, there's like one and a half fewer halls open. Yes. Definitely. But it's still, I've been seeing some pictures. It still looks like, you know, people are having a great time. There are definitely publishers over there. They're mm -hmm. selling games and they're selling out of games Good, too. Yeah. So if you are attending Spiel and you are looking for a specific game, I would check that publisher's Twitter, yeah, because they are posting like uh, when certain games are selling out. We also really haven't been keeping track of the new releases that are coming out mm -hmm. at Spiel. So if you are, you know, looking forward to a new release, please let us know in the comments down below. We would love to check out uh, the games that you're excited about. And that is pretty much the biggest piece of news that we have. I today. think that's a, yeah, that's the biggest one. That's the biggest convention <laughs> yeah, out there. So biggest convention. It's a big news. Um, as for our uh, our channel, because this is a kind of a combined vlog of sorts, and we're including timestamps down below if you're interested in just kind of jumping around to the different sections mm. of this episode. But um, as for our channel, you know, we were looking through the videos that we've been doing for the past couple of months, and it's been a while since we put out a one of those like longer, heavier game playthroughs. Yeah, I think Agricola technically is is a bigger one. But yeah, but even that was several weeks ago. That was a little while and ago. So yeah. for the past uh, week, and a half, maybe I'd say we've yeah. been preparing, uh, getting back into the swing of the uh, swing of things. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize how hard it is to do those playthroughs. It is and a lot so of work. Yeah, it feels good to be doing them again. Yeah. and we've up, we've actually filmed, edited, and uploaded one already uh, for Praga Cup at Regni. Although that's now for up there for our Patreon community, mm -hmm. it'll be going live on our channel uh, probably in a week and a half or something. Yeah, sometime in the near future. We have one coming out on Monday. Uh, it is not Lahav because we had actually planned on putting that video out this week. 
But instead, we put out a poll on our channel as well as on Instagram to see whether or not、uh, people would prefer the long, long version of the game or the short, short version.、Yeah. Because we went to play it and we realized, like, oh wait, there's actually a, a long version.、Mm-hmm. We played the short version first, and everybody voted for the long version. So. Yeah, it was about. I think on both different polls from two separate、uh, platforms, it was like seventy-five, twenty-five. It was a significant, significant margin. Yeah, margin saying、so. go the long game. So because of that reason. We, we pushed it a week. Yeah, we weren't ready to quite film it yet, so、yes. we will. But we do anticipate releasing that one next week as well. Keep an eye out for that.、Mm-hmm. In the meantime, if you are looking for some playthrough videos, we do have a couple of them, a couple of new ones over on Watch It Played.、Yep. So we've made a playlist specifically for the Watch It Played、uh, playthroughs, so that you can just, you know, at a glance, look for them quickly on our channel.、Yep. The recent ones are for Gargoyles, which is a co-op. Game, it's co-op,、uh, as well as horrified, horrified the with the new、uh, the new American monsters, and、yeah. they're both co-op games、yeah. actually. Also, we were on a podcast recently with Board Game Barbecue. They are a conglomerate of different <laughs>、uh, creators that come together from Australia. Yeah,、uh, I believe there's nine, maybe ten people.、There's, I don't know exactly how many, but they don't all appear. At the same time, maybe they do. But when we when we recorded with them, they, there was three. Three of them, yes. Yeah. And so we、uh, we recently did that. So we will leave a link in the description below if you、yes. want to check out that podcast. Please follow them. They are so nice, so friendly. You know,、They're、it was、friendly. really really fun getting to speak to them about board games. And we did talk about a lot of different board games that episode.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So please go ahead and check it out. All right, moving on to today's topic, which、yes. is how we organize our games, as well as kind of like accessories and just stuff, stuff, stuff. <laughs> other stuff besides the board games, right?、Game. Um, we do get a lot of questions in regards to our dice tray specifically, as well as the the mat that we use on the, the table. table. Mat. Yeah.、Uh-huh. So let's start with the dice tray. Sure. This is our dice tray. <laughs> Everybody wants to know where we got this from. I'm so sorry, but I don't know the name of the company. So、yes. our local convention, Strategicon, they hold a raffle every、uh-huh. every convention, and I won this in a raffle. We also have a dice tower、mm-hmm. that we purchased from that convention that we were using before we got this. Yes. And dice towers are are nice, but they're kind of loud. Wow,、well, a little、uh, funky. Yeah.、Um, and then I, I don't know. Sometimes like you gotta like turn it, rotate it.、Mm-hmm. Just I don't know. I'm I'm more of I like to physically roll the dice versus、mm-hmm. just drop it into something. Now, if you're not familiar with what dice towers are,、um, I just want to show you the one that we have. We don't use it, like I said, but it's really it's, it's actually really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically, the mechanism is you drop you drop the die on top. And it, It does that, and it rolls it for you, which is you also、go. part of the reason why we don't use it because we like to roll the、we、dice. We like to be、ourselves. in control、so、somehow. That's a dice tower. We never really feature it in our videos because, like I said, we don't use it. Yeah, filming with it is also kind of difficult because、mm-hmm. it kind of blocks obstruct and it's obstructed. So yeah. As for our board gaming、uh, resources, you know, like when games come with money or just any kind of bits, bits.、Yeah. We have two different things that we use. There are these kind of like a silicone like rubber, yeah, silicone, silicone yeah, bowls、rubber. that you you pinch at the corners and. They come in cute different colors. They do, yeah. And you can get these off of the BGG store. I believe they now come in two sizes. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. The store.、Um, so there's we, like a variety color pack where you can get a very specific、uh, color if you want.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just these little bowls. Yeah, and they、you、fold can, up nicely too. You can use them as a dice tray also. It's really nice because they fold and then like you can just kind of store them. So if you're going to go to game night, you know. Yeah. Now these we don't really use in our videos so much because they do take up space.、Mm-hmm. You know, if we have to have several different types of resources, that's several different bowls that we have to fit on camera. So when we do record videos, we use these. Yes. So these are. Are, are really simple, clear plastic bowls that Naveen gets from、yes. the dollar store. From Dollar Tree, Dollar so Tree. they have stepped up their quality. <laughs>、uh, the previous ones, they they've cracked. They crack, These、yeah. ones are actually pretty sturdy. I kind of want to crack one just so. No,、care. no, don't crack. <laughs> they come in、really... like a twelve pack for a dollar. They're fantastic. You just go to the little party section. I'm pretty sure these are for like a like a four year old's birthday party or something, but they work great as bit balls. The other question that we get a lot is what kind of mat are we using when we film? So if you have seen any of our older videos, even from just like a year ago, maybe. Yeah. We yeah. used to use a gray. Uh, actual play mat、uh-huh. that would kind of cut off on the side, so you would see the black table. Yeah, it wasn't long enough in terms of like widescreen,、mm-hmm. and so yes, if we had to like really zoom out the camera, you would actually see the tables on the left and right. Yeah, and it made everything kind of like really dark. So we, yeah, yeah, we stopped using that. That is the only real play mat that we have. The opposite side of that is red, and so I think maybe in our 
first couple of playthroughs that we filmed, we actually filmed with the red side. If, if you watch our pipeline tutorial, technically Monique's pipeline tutorial video, uh, it was filmed on the opposite side of that play mat. Don't, <laughs> don't watch it. Don't watch it. <laughs> In terms of the one that we use now, this is actually, this is recommended by uh, Jesse from Quackalope, mm -hmm. uh, the channel Quackalope. It's, uh, it's one that he uses as well, and it is a wool blanket. It's a wool blanket from yeah. Amazon, yeah. Yeah, because he's a, he's an actual photographer, and yeah. so he was like, "Get get this wool blanket on off Amazon, and you won't regret it." And he's right. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. We really really enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. It does have a tendency to, uh, if you kind of rub against it, some some of the like fibers will pull up. Yeah. But, um, now we've kind of learned don't drag against it, <laughs> and, and everything will be okay. Yeah, so it's perfect for the uses of filming. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much all we use it for. Yeah. Now, as for how we organize our games, so we have received a couple of games in like trades in the past mm -hmm. where we where they have their own specific organizers that whoever like a tackle know, box or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So we have featured those in the past, but today we do want to talk about our favorite type of organizer, which is by a company called Pulted Space. Mm -hmm. I believe they're European. They have actually sent us a couple of inserts in the past, and we've also purchased a couple. Basically, the Pulted Space is it is is a unique kind of organizer brand because they use a different material a lot of organizers use like almost like wood, wood yeah uh, but they use it's almost like a styrofoam it's a uh, foam, foam core I it's think. foam core yeah. some of the organizers that we have have space for the expansion of that game so mm -hmm. if you see any kind of blank holes that's what that's that's what, that's that what that's about yeah. uh -huh. and so here we have our uh the gaia project organizer just yes. so we can kind of physically show you what it looks like. What one looks like, yeah. It's nice because all of the different player components have their own little tray. Uh, their own little tray. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. There's like how many factions are in this game? Yeah, game? there. So that's gonna take a while. So there this is go. this is what it looks like. If you want to be the the blue player, you just kind of take out the tray and hand it There's to them. All your stuff, yeah. Now I will say though that you probably need some kind of glue. I did glue these together because they will fall apart if it, you don't. It is highly, highly recommended. Like ten out of ten, I would recommend gluing glue at the at the junctions where everything connects yes. because then it'll stay sturdy for a very long time. What I like about these organizers is they are so light. Mm -hmm. They're they're so light, and I actually do like the material that they're made out me of. Me too. Yeah. Because there's no splintering. That's kind of I don't know it's a texture thing for me. Like uh, some of yeah. the other. Um, inserts are like made out of that wood. I really don't like, the like that pressed wood. Yeah, they're prettier. I will say, like this is not necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing insert. There's part of it that I like, and that yes, I know what you mean. Well, to Naveen, it is. Yes. Naveen really likes this kind of organizer. I do. I do like it. Um, I like the fact that sometimes with the wood ones, like man, that that box is just so much heavier compared yeah. to this. Like the the light. Like the aspect of this, of it of it things. almost preserves the weight of the box, yeah. you know, before you had this insert, which yeah. is great. And so, yeah, so you have comp uh, spots for the different components, and then underneath, it yeah. kind of tucks away. This is they always have nice design where everything fits just snugly, just perfectly. Right. Um, and we store our games uh, in a vertical fashion, not you know stacked on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And so this, I've never felt that you know I hear components just kind of sliding around or. Or, you know, you open the box and everything's everywhere. So right. that is very, very nice and convenient. Yeah. So this this kind of an organizer really makes a game like this where it's kind of a mess to, you know, to put away yeah. and to, to reset set up. up. Yeah. It makes it a lot more uh, user friendly. And it's a lot, just a lot easier to get these games played. Because yes. that's a significant barrier for me, at least. Totally. If a game I think is for a really, lot of people it is. Yeah. If a game is really difficult to set up. And the last bit about specifically these folded space inserts is probably the big kicker for a lot of people is they are much more affordable mm -hmm. than other inserts. Are, and yeah. that's a big deal because a lot of inserts can cost sometimes the price of the game. Yeah. And for me, even even if it makes it easier to get it played, that's sometimes it's just not worth it. Some sort of psychological barrier about yeah, it. Like it's being a big like, time. The game was 40 bucks, but the insert's 30. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Twice, you know, yeah. that's a lot. So these ones are a lot more uh, cost effective. Yeah. And so that's about it. If you have any questions about any Anything that you've seen here today, let us know. Also, if you have any recommendations for what you use as accessories for any of the above things, please let us know down below. Maybe somebody out there could also uh, gain some benefit from your recommendations. We've also included a link to the Folded Space website mm. if you'd like to learn more about them. We are That is not a, an affiliate link at no. all. We're not getting a kickback from this. It's just a, a company that we would like to support. And finally, 
some reviews. Yes. So yeah. today we're going to be talking about four different games. Let's talk board games. Um, yeah. <laughs> Three of which are from one publisher. And so let's start with the one that's not from that publisher. Okay, the one outlier. <laughs> okay. So we have a game. It is called Labyrinthos. And yes. this is designed by Lindsay Road and published by Dog Mike Games. And it is essentially a labyrinth crawler in which we are lost in this labyrinth. There's a minotaur, minotaur, I can never pronounce that word. Yeah, it's not just any labyrinth. It's, not, it's no. the labyrinth of the minotaur. minotaur. <laughs> now you have me confused. Uh, minotaur, okay. I used to say minotaur, maybe I'm wrong. Minotaur. Well, anyway, you're trying to avoid this creature and you're trying to find four different keys so you can unlock your way and get out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's essentially what is going on in this game. The game plays two to four players and each player takes on the role of a hero. And so everybody has a hero board each. Mm -hmm. And on your hero board to the left shows you all the different actions that you can take. And so the way that the game works is you have to spend, there are hands and feet tokens. They're action tokens. Yeah, yeah, they're essentially action tokens. And on the left of your hero board, each action tells you what you have to spend in order to take that action. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be stuff like moving around the labyrinth, you know, uncovering different uh, tiles. Different tiles. Yeah. You can rotate the walls because at some point the, the minotaur will move and you don't want to get caught by the minotaur yep. because then you'll take wounds. And when you take a wound, you have to block off an action. Yeah, you have to cover up in one of your actions so then it basically kind of pigeonholes you as to yeah. what you're able to do. Right. Uh, so if you want to unlock that action again, then you have to heal. So mm -hmm. there's kind of like this balance between what actions you have, what's available, all while you're still trying to find the keys. Yes, and every time you find a key, uh, because there are four different ones and you have to find all of them before you can get out, it uh, allows you to upgrade an action and you get to, I believe you get to choose what you're upgrading to. Mm -hmm. And overall, it just feels like it does have some unique kind of refreshing concepts put into the game. It also has some really interesting artwork that Naveen really, really loves. I actually really <laughs> like the artwork in this game. Yeah, whoever the artist is, let's give them a shout out. It is Alyssa Menold. Very good job. I yeah. really like the art. I, I don't know. It's like it's got different. this like, kind of comic book hero kind of kind of vibe to it, even though I'm not really into comics. I like it a lot. Now, this is a very kind of like family weight style game. Mm -hmm. I think that it's probably better at higher player counts because, you know, you can definitely just move the Minotaur elsewhere where there's no real risk of getting caught yes, by that's the right. Minotaur. That's true. Yeah, there is also an element of luck. Uh, so if I'm exploring one part of the labyrinth and Monique is somewhere else, and the, the tiles are kind of all just randomly assorted. If she just happens to be in an area that has a high density of those keys, and I'm kind of exploring and mm -hmm. just coming up with blanks, uh, then that can kind of get a little bit frustrating. But that's the heart and soul of the game. You know, you're going around exploring the labyrinth to try to uncover those tiles to find the keys. If you're looking for a simple strategy game with kind of refreshing mechanics, and this is something that maybe you should check out, there are also uh, desperation cards that's a part of the game that we yep. didn't mention, and mm -hmm. those can can uh, really affect the gameplay or, or what's happening in the game. Mm -hmm. So for us, this one is probably not going to get put on the table very often just because we like more heavier strategy games. Mm -hmm. But like we said, this is a good family weight game. Uh, best with like a, a full complement of four, I would say. Mm -hmm. And so that is Labyrinthos, designed by the wonderful Lindsay Road. And now the other three games, like I was mentioning, are from the same publisher. So I might as well bring them all out at once. Yes. And the publisher is called uh, BoardGameTables.com. They board make board game tables, but they also make games. They do. These games were sent to us along with a couple of other titles that we haven't had the chance to play yet. Yeah. So we just wanted to talk about these three for now. And so let's start with Mountain Goats. Sure. Shall we? Smallest box. Smallest box. Smallest footprint, I yes. guess. First of all, if you're not familiar with the games from Board Game Tables, uh, they are really high quality in terms of their components. They're yes. one of the best quality, especially for games of this this weight. I would imagine because they have a lot of access to wood. Maybe uh, that's I don't know. Why. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I don't know, know why, know. but I'm thinking that's they're always why. just so beautiful. And the the, uh, the artists that they get to illustrate for these games, they do a really good job. Yeah, this is and the, so, the, the production quality is like very high. Very there. high. Yeah. So this is a game called Mountain Goats. It's a game for two to four players, two to four, really yeah. quick. It plays in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And essentially what you're doing is there are these cards. Yes. They're laid out on the table. Uh -huh. And I believe they're numbered five, five through, ten. through 10. And they're kind of stacked in columns. Yep. Everybody's goats. Everybody has a goat for each column. That starts they, on the bottom of a mountain. Yeah, they all start at the bottom of each mountain. And there are these four dice that you roll at the start of your turn. And after rolling your dice, you're going to cluster them so that their sums or even the standalone dice equal uh, one of the columns. Yeah, anywhere from five to ten. Yes. So if I roll value. a three and a two, then I can cluster that into a five. And you basically get to move your goat up for each of those values. Right. And so that could be several of these stacks at once. If I roll a five and I roll a three and a two and I cluster those together, then that means I'm going up twice on right. the, fi the five column. Mm -hmm. And then whoever gets their goat to the very top of the stack gets a chit 
that's valued at whatever the stack is. That's right. Yep. If I get to the top of the five stack, then I get five points, essentially. Yes. And then this game has kind of a king of the hill mechanism. So if Monique is at the top of the five stack and she keeps rolling combinations of fives, she can still, as long as there's those tokens there to score, she can continue to reap those benefits yeah. and just keep scoring and scoring. So there becomes this kind of pressure of like, oh no, there's a lot of those tokens. Monique's at the top of the hill. <laughs> I got to get up there and I got to unseat her because the second you you go and become the top of the hill, that goat that was originally there has to drop all the way down to the yes. bottom of the mountain and they have to climb their way all the way back up. Yeah, so it's, your, it's in your best interest as, as an opponent to not let somebody just sit there just at can't. the top. Yeah. Uh, if also, if you get one of each token type, then there are these bonus tokens that are worth a lot more, right. like 15 points or so. Uh, and then the game ends when I believe... Either all of the bonus tokens have been, ta have been taken. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, or three, or three of the columns are completely the depleted. Columns, yeah, have been completely depleted. Yeah. And so the first time we played this game, we played it at two. two yeah. And Naveen... I liked it a lot at two. Yeah, it was great. She I didn't like did it. not like it for <laughs> some reason. At two. Well, because I just felt like, okay, we're just rolling these dice and we're just taking turns going up you know, the stacks. Yeah, and... it's kind of like I took the seven column, you took the eight, and then yeah, we it... kind of competed for the nine. At two, for... if he's sitting yeah. at the top of the hill, clearly I have to unseat him. It's a lot of because, work, yeah. yeah. And like for a lot of those columns, it takes a lot longer to get up, depending on what the value is. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we played it at three, and it was really, really fun. It was exhilarating. Just It becomes <laughs> yeah. this like round table, kind of like almost like a party game where we're like, are you really going like, to go up there? let them stay you, there at seven? Stay? Yeah. yeah. It's like seven's the most common thing to roll. Are you sure you want to leave them there? It's like, yeah. well, I got my own goals. I'm, I'm so close to the 10, and I'm so close to a set collection. So maybe I just, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe it's on you to do it. You know, exactly. you unseat them. The table talk is really yeah. awesome yeah. at higher player accounts. So I went from meh to, oh, Oh gosh, this is great. We're keeping it. And it's it's so easy. Small this box is too. Tiny box, yeah. really easy to get into. You know, you just lay them out. You know, it's a whole aspect of like laying out the cards. <laughs> yeah. and it is take up a lot of space yeah. for a game of this tiny. Size, yeah. But it was really exciting. And it's a nice way to kind of start off the game night. So that is Mountain Goats, designed by Stefan Ristow, same designer of Hentes, if you're familiar with that game. And this right. one of the three that we're about to talk about is my favorite. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Putting it out there. No spoilers. Okay, moving on. We have our next game. This one is Kabuto Sumo, designed by Tony Miller and art by Quan Chai Moria. Uh, it looks beautiful. Yes, Quan Chai Moria is a very, is a brilliant, brilliant illustrator. Got lots of and skills. As you can tell, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so this is a dexterity game. So this is a one dex dexterity game between the three, but it's a little bit uh, different. It's not your typical dexterity game. This is a unique game game it in which unique. in which people play as uh bugs <laughs> sumo wrestling sumo bugs. wrestling bugs so the theme is hilarious <laughs> it plays two to four players and basically depending on the player count you're going to set up this arena mm -hmm. uh that is probably the most, most challenging tedious. most tedious part of the game yeah. you know that's that's a little bit of a barrier for me like <laughs> having to set it up exactly the way that it shows yeah. there's a lot of chits that come with the game even though the components are beautiful and uh, everybody has their own little uh, insect sumo card asymmetric that, yeah they're asymmetric they they have their own kind of uh, ability and so the big kicker with this game is it kind of plays like you know the, at the arcade where you have that game where you drop the the coin in and you're trying to get the coin to push all the other coins yeah. so it kind of waterfalls down it's just this like thing that pushes back and forth with a ton of coins and yeah. you think this is gonna be easy because there's so many coins on that thing i'm gonna get a bunch of tickets <laughs> you put in the coin and it pushes and, it and nothing comes out it. yeah <laughs> That's the concept of this game, except you're doing that with your finger. And so what you're essentially doing is you're going to choose one of the tokens from your supply because we start the game with a certain number of these different size tokens. Yep. And you're going to just choose a direction. You're going to um, align the little ramp depending on where you'd like to push. And you're going to place your token down and with your finger, you're just going to push it in a straight line until it goes completely, completely enters the arena. Yes. Uh -huh. And you're, you're essentially trying to push your opponent's insect off of the arena because yes. whoever is able to do that first is going to be the winner. Or you can get your opponent to bust if they are out of tokens that they can use to then slide into the right. arena. And the way that that happens is if I were to slide my, or push my token into the arena and nothing falls out, then I don't get any more tokens into my supply mm -hmm. to use for the future. So ideally, when you do that, you would either want to push your opponent's you know, sumo bug Go off the, the arena or yeah. get a bunch of tokens off in that push so that you can collect them into your supply and continue playing. Right. Now, we're a little bit split on this game. Very split. <laughs> Why don't you go first? Okay, me? I'm not a big fan of this one. <laughs> <laughs> Just <try> uh, <laughs> so first of all, this is a standing game. You, you, you can't be sitting like Monique and I because then you're, 
you're going to be kind of, I mean, you can, but then you're going to be like kind of doing something yeah, like this. You're going to want, push, you're gonna want to be able to walk around the Kind of like ice cool where you kind of want access to, <laughs> to everything around. It's okay. It's not my okay. favorite game. Caveat, uh, Naveen does not know how to push these tokens. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I get the concept. The first time we played it, we flicked them. Okay. And the rule book literally says, do not, do flick, not flick these tokens. Yes. And I was like, push. Okay. So push <laughs> yeah she was she was shoving and that's the same thing as, as flicking yeah. essentially and then we had to watch a video i think we watched one of their i think it was a kickstarter I think, and yeah. we watched like one of the videos that they made and everybody was just like you really just like move the token forward until it completely enters the arena and that's mm -hmm. what you really need to do but naveen after even after we watched that video would move and then push <laughs> it's like come on <laughs> you gotta play it I was playing it my way. But you're also not the biggest fan of dexterity games. I'm not the biggest fan of dexterity games. Uh, gosh, is there one that I really, really liked? Uh, maybe Meeple Circus was probably my favorite dexterity game. Yeah, but... I think that's the only one that you liked. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, this one, it's it's, it's okay. The, the setup, uh, I think the, the setup time compared mm -hmm. to game time and enjoyment that I get out of what I'm just doing, it's just kind of like, it's not the right ratio of things mm -hmm. kind of coming together for me. For yeah, I totally get that. The setup time is not the best for me. I get a lot of enjoyment out of the way that the game looks and the theme mm -hmm. like the different components for the different bugs like if there you can be what's the name of that bug that rolls up poop it's like a stink bug no that's a yeah dung, beetle. About, dung beetle dung yeah, beetle yeah. there's a dung beetle in there and then their token the the it's a big a, asymmetric poop. yeah is they get this big poop token that only they can use yeah and it's like a, you know the bigger the chit the better because it'll it occupies more space right. and so the more, likelihood of more pushability yeah, yeah is higher so the only thing for me, I, I find the game really endearing, and I think this is a fantastic one to play with kids. If you have mm -hmm. kids, you know, th this is something that would probably be very exciting for them. Yeah, it gets them active. Yeah, it gets yeah. them active. It's really, really cute. The different designs of the of the insect and just the overall production quality of the game is fantastic. It is a like, very... Out of yes. this world. Yes, production. But when I push... Okay, we're also not very good at this game. So when we push the token in, it's a little bit anticlimactic. Sometimes it is. Yeah. Very, yeah. Because you I push it in... I think that might in, be the biggest thing for me. And we can't get the tokens to fall. We just can't do it. So anyway, that's just how we feel about this game. Uh, if you, Like I said, if you have kids, this might be a big hit for you mm. and your family. Or if you really enjoy dexterity games and you want to try a different one that doesn't involve flicking, do not flick. <laughs> That's against the rules. It is against the rules. And so that is Kabuto Sumo, designed by Tony Miller. Okay, the last game that we want to talk about is Bytes. This is designed by both Bridget and Wolfgang Dit, and it is a two to four player auction type of game. Oh, not auction, sorry. Uh, stock market type of game. Yeah, kind of. So this game is very cute. Yes. It is about uh, moving ants towards the ant hill. You know, you, you set up the game and it's basically, you set up all these different types of food tokens in a line. Mm -hmm. No, it's not a, it's, a, it's like a curve. It's, exactly. you know, it's a curvy I mean, you could, ant if, path. If you had a big enough table, it could be a straight line, technically. Yeah, you want to curve it. Yeah. And the components are really, really cute. You know, it, it features all of these uh, food tokens that are kind of like... Almost 3D, double, yeah, double layered. 3D, cardboard. double layered. They Very were difficult thick. to punch. When I was punching them, I felt like I was going to break each and every one of them uh -huh. because of that <laughs> double layer. But yes, they're very cute. And so you have these five different colors of ants and each ant uh, represents the different type of food token. And so on your turn, you just move an ant to the next food token that matches its color. Mm -hmm. So if I'm moving the yellow ant, then I'm going to move to the next cheese. The piece of cheese, yeah. Yes. It, it only moves on its own type of food. Right. Yeah. And then you get to collect one of the food tokens that are adjacent to that ant. You never get to pick up the one that it's on top of. Yep. It has to be the one that's adjacent to it. And so you're going to be doing this and doing this until each of the ants make it to the very end of the line where the ant hill, which is a 3D structure that you have to build, where that kind of sits. At that point, the ants are going to get positioned on top of this anthill, depending on which cards that you have in play. And once they all reach the anthill, the game will end, and then you score for all the tokens that you've collected. And so the way that scoring works varies from game to game because mm. this game also comes with a deck of cards. Yep. And there are four right. different types of cards, and they each dictate a different type of thing that scores. So like one type of card will dictate how the anthill scores. So it's not going to be the same every game. You might choose the one that says whenever an ant gets to the ant hill, you place them from lowest value to highest. So if I were to put the yellow ant on the one point section of the ant hill at the end of the game, the, all the cheese tokens are going to be worth only one, one point. point. Yep. So you're playing to the different strategies of those cards. There are also chocolate and wine tokens, and those do different things also depending on which two cards you have in play. Because one stack of cards determines how the chocolate works, and then the other stack of cards determines how the wine works. And then that fourth stack is just a 
kind of like an, an extra thing yeah, because yeah, the game also variable. comes with other components like the zebra ant, rocks. Rocks, <laughs> yeah, I think rocks. Uh, little sticks. And so these extra pieces come into play if you have happened to choose that card mm -hmm. that the piece belongs to. Right. So I really, really like this game. This is my favorite of the three. It is a little bit of setup as well because you do have to lay out all those tokens for a very fast game. Yeah. This also plays like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But for a game of this kind of footprint and this weight, it's pretty thinky. Uh, is, there's, yes. there's a lot to kind of strategize. Yeah, you're trying to manipulate the market because, like like we said, as you're moving along, you're going to pick one of two options uh, of which kind of resource you're going to take. So you want to get it so that you know that you're going to score the most of that and your opponents, if you mm -hmm. see, okay, Monique is collecting a lot of grapes, I'm going to try to tank the price of grapes so that when she scores in the end, she has the least amount of points. So there's a lot of market manipulation in yeah. this game. Uh, I, I actually really like this one a lot. Um, it's it's close between this one and Mountain Goats. Uh, now that we're kind of talking about it more, I'm thinking about like all the different things that yeah. you can do. Mountain Goats is a lot more social. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's kind of talking and like, oh, why are you doing that? Or it's yeah. exciting with a die roll. This is a lot more thinky. So people are a lot more quiet and thinking like, oh God, which ant do I move? Which ant do we get to the finish line first, right? Because that's yeah. going to determine the the amount of points that everybody will everybody get. Everybody will get, yeah. Yeah, that is the stock market there, part of it. There is some uh, colluding though that you can do in this game. So <laughs> if, if, let's say you're playing a three player or four player game and Monique and I are leading in great and we're like, hey, let's get the grapes to the end so we can score this. Mm -hmm. Like, so Monique, on your turn, come on, move move it along so yeah. that we can get it to the end and, and, right. and get the most points for it. So right. there is some table talk still there. This is a really, really fun one. Definitely mm -hmm. one that's staying in our collection yeah, because definitely. it's really easy to just pull out and teach and and uh, have a nice thinky filler, I guess, right? Yeah, this this could fall in the, the category of a gateway game, but one that gamers really enjoy. And so that is Bites, designed by Wolfgang and Bridget Ditt. Yes, so that's... Those are all the board games so that we games. have today to talk about. What have y'all been playing? Please let us know in the comments down below. Also, uh, what, what did we ask? What kind of accessory accessories, holders yeah. do you use or what kind of play mats? How do you organize your games? We would love to hear from you. So thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. We have included lots of links in the description below. <laughs> so go ahead and take a look and peruse as you will. Uh, special thanks to Many Worlds Tavern for sponsoring this video. Yes. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Yes. If you enjoy watching videos like this, please consider subscribing. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.